Hi everybody, Chuck here with Jenkins Boat Works. Welcome back. Uh, focus has shifted. We are starting to work on a Freedom 17. This is a 17 foot canoe out of Ted Moore's book, Canoe Craft. Canoe Craft is widely uh, revered as pretty much the Bible of uh, Cedar Strip canoe and kayak building. And we are taking a plan out of the book. There's five or six plans within the pages of the book. So if you're looking for a canoe to build, they're in there. The only trick is you gotta be able to figure out how to get the, the offsets and the, the half breadths out of the pages and onto a graph. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do the plotting and lofting of the plans for the Freedom 17. And after editing the video, I feel like I jump all over the place uh, in various parts of it. And the whole thing seems like it shouldn't be as confusing as it is. And I'm, so I'm just gonna apologize now for the fact that I feel like I jump all over the place. But if, if you watch and listen, and you're trying to figure out how to do lofting, uh, I think that it'll all come together and make sense. It's really not super difficult. Uh, you have to have some understanding of the terminology, which we'll go through. And uh, uh, so anyway, just, just watch. And then if you need to go back and look at particular sections, do that. Um, and if you have questions or comments, of course, put those down in the comments. We'll be happy to discuss that. And uh, there's a lot of canoe building goes on in the winter time, and I know many projects have already started. Uh, so I'm a little late to the party on mine because I've been busy working on the Haven. And, and quite honestly, there are some other things that we're going to still be doing on the Haven uh, that may intersperse uh, video episodes between this and that. But that happened before when we were building the Stitch and Glue kayak. So um, anyway, I, I think I can do two things at once. Well, anyway, we're glad you're here. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. Uh, if you want to click the little bell to get notifications of future um, uh, videos, do that. We're going to do a whole series on this canoe, and I'm really excited about it. Done one before, and, and I learned a lot the first time, and I think we'll have a lot of good information to share. Uh, there are varying opinions on how you, how you do these and how you put them together, and uh, there's not any super one way right answer but uh, anyway we'll do the canoe lofting in this in this episode and hopefully uh, you can get something out of that and like I said if you have questions put them down in the comments all right let's jump in all right we've got some of these stations for the freedom 17 plotted out and in this particular canoe it's asymmetrical so in other words, uh, you'll be able to tell what is the bow and what is the stern. A um, couple of important things to note. We're going to show how we get all these various stations, how we loft them out of the book here in just a second. But um, I've got stations... 16, which is the aftermost, I believe, 15, 14, 13, 12, and so on. And I happen to do number four clear down there because I had the paper that was the right size for it. You're gonna hear the words butt line this is your very bottom most part that mounts on the strong back. There is the strong back, which is no longer living in my hayloft. It's the one we used when we did that canoe. So it's gonna to have to be modified a little bit. Those cross pieces you see on the top there, they're just pieces of two by four screwed into the top of the strong back. Each one of those had a station set up on it. 
And so you'll notice, say here on 14, it looks like a mushroom. And so this part down here, which is about eight inches wide, that'll actually be cut out of plywood and that's what will mount the stations onto those two by fours that are crossways on the strong back. Part of the reason I laid these out is because I want you to see something. This boat's gonna have a bit of rocker to it, which means that on the ends, um, it will come up and even the shear line has a bit of a sweep to it. So these are all set up pretty much on the edge of this workbench. And if you look and see where the shear lines are, like here, you'll notice that those shear lines are going up as we get down the workbench. Now they even out up there in the middle of the boat amidship because in the middle of the boat it's pretty pretty fair pretty straight the other thing you'll notice is these profiles here this is your highest point on the form and so on those say here's station 12 we're at about 20 inches so that'll be 20 inches high off of the strong back same thing here at station 11 20 inches that represents what will be like the keel, the most bottom part of the boat. So if you can look back at those, you'll notice that those get shorter as we get all the way down here. So in the very last station, close to where the after stem will be, see that one's only at a little better than 18, about 18 and a half inches. That's what creates your rocker. You can think of it like a rocking chair. All right. So just as a point of definition, the profile is your height all the way from the butt line, which is this very bottom part here, your water line denoted by WL. In some cases I write it out it's not always the same, what, how I do it. And then I've just got it marked off in inches. So you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, all the way up to, in this case, 19 and 5 sixteenths. You're basically just plotting out a graph that, that we will then transfer onto plywood and cut these out. Okay, so you've got a butt line. I wrote it on this one. A shear line, which is basically where your gunnels are. And then the profile. Those are all very important terms that we need when we go to look at the offsets and the half breadths. So let's go do that. So this bench over here is where I will make my strips and scarf them together. Over here is just a, this was my sewing table, is now turned into a lofting table. And uh, Canoe Craft by Ted Moore is considered to be sort of the Bible of cedar strip canoe design and building. I'm using this, this graph paper and the graph paper, I like this because it's set up in one inch squares and they're divided into four. So that tells me quarter inch within each of those squares. I got this paper at uh, just a office supply store. Probably could get it at a um, art supply, something like that. Um, I got this a long time ago when I did the first canoe Bean Fang, four by four gridded paper. I really like it because I can use those squares uh, to mark out my distances without having to completely rely on my metal yardstick, which is hiding under there. 
Let's start out with a couple of definitions. Um, we need to know what our base or butt line is, our shear line, and the profile. What we're doing is we're taking these numbers off of these table of heights and the half breadths, and we're transferring them onto a graph paper so that we can make the various stations, in this case, 16, to build this Freedom 17. The shear line is along the gunnel. Now, when you make these stations, you make them upside down because you build the boat upside down. So this down here represents each of the stations, all these lines. So if we see that one there, well, let's go on over to number eight. Let's see right here. See, it's pretty much a midship, uh, part of the widest part of the boat. So I've started doing it on here, and I've got my grass, graph paper. And you need to know what your shear line is because that's the, even though you're building it upside down, that's your top edge of the, of the mold. <laughs> Kinda. It's the top of the boat. The profile, although it's the top of, top of the, the graph paper here, is actually the keel. That's the bottom of the boat. And on this particular form, the profile is 20 inches. So on the water lines, which is the vertical, you count all the way from the butt line, which is clear down here. See, I wrote it on there, butt line. And you count in the butt line and you measure up 20 inches. And any kind of water line measurement that you have is based off of this bottom base line, not off of the shear line. It tells us in here that the shear is at seven inches right here those numbers are in feet the second number is inches the third number is eighths of inches and then if there's a plus sign that means add a sixteenth so here where it says shear over here you come across and we're on station number eight zero feet seven inches zero eighths so new, so we know it's seven inches up it's the table of heights so it's seven inches up. Well, that's an easy one. You just mark that off at seven inches. You draw a line across. 15 and seven eighths. Why does it say 15 and seven eighths at the end of the shear line? Let's find out. In the half breadths, so that's the widths, the widths halfway on each side of the center line. For number eight says, one foot, three inches, seven eighths. One foot, three inches, 12 threes, 15 inches, and seven, seven eighths. So what we did on that one, from the center line, the half breadth, we come across all the way until we get to 15. I've got a mark on the butt line. Every two inches, well, until I get out to there where I mark the 15, every two inches, is our widths or our half breadths. And you gotta do it on each side. And there it is. So we know that on this particular mold, it's gonna be 31 plus inches, 15 and 15, and seven eighths and seven eighths. That's how wide the canoe is at the top, at the gunnel. So now we're gonna use the water line measurements and the butt line measurements and figure out what the rest of this mold looks like. More in a minute. One more thing, how did we know that the profile was 20 inches? Well, in the table of heights, we come down to profile, come across to number eight, and it is one foot eight inches. Well, one foot eight inches, that's 20 inches. So from the very bottom down here, we go all the way up here, 20 inches. We know that that is the deepest part or the highest part of this particular mold. Okay, more in a minute. Okay, so I've plotted in the, the uh, table of heights. So this top section up here for number eight. 
And so the shear line we knew was at seven inches, right? That's how high it is up off of the, the butt line. The next one, butt two inches is one foot, seven inches or 19 inches and seven eighths. So on the two inch butt line, we go up 19 and seven eighths. And you can see it, that's just right close to the 20. It's only two inches away from the center line. So you've got a slight curve coming down. On the six inch butt line, go straight up there and we're 19 and a half. The book says it's 1 07 4. That's 4 eighths. It's a half inch. 1 foot 7 inches. 19 and a half. Let's double check that. 6 inch butt line. 6 inch. Station 8. Wait a minute. Where are we? Uh, that's a 6 inch. I think I goofed it up. I was on the number nine one. It's not right. I have to change that one. It should be 19 inches, three eighths plus. How about that? So I caught my mistake on this six inch butt line. I was on station nine and we're on station eight. So I have now corrected that and it was 1-07, three plus. So one foot, seven inches, or 19 inches, three eighths, plus a sixteenth. So now we're just above the 19 mark. Well, it's not mark, but that's the 19 inch line. 19 inches. Each little tiny square is a quarter inch. So two eighths, three eighths, plus a sixteenth. Okay. So you just do that until you get all of them. Now, what's interesting is like, there's the, the 14 inch butt line clear up here and you can see how far it's still up there on a nice flat curve coming out from the middle of the canoe. But then two more inches over and suddenly we're clear down here. So that's a 16 inch butt line, right? And that's at the widest point, but that one's only seven inches off of the, off of the, the height. So see, it's right close to the shear line because the shear line's at seven inches. Very interesting. All right, now we'll do the half breaths. I'm gonna plot a few of those and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we've plotted the water lines. And the beauty of this is that they start to intersect with the butt line measurements. So the table of heights start intersecting with the half breadths, and it's kind of a check system to where you can see if your curve's gonna be right and if they're mating up. So uh, the first one on number eight is water line eight inches. Water line eight inches, table station eight, one dash oh four. So that's one foot four inches, no eights. 16 inches, that's an easy one. So at water line eight here, water line, remember, counts up. That's eight inches from the base. And so we go over 16 inches. 1-040, 16 inches. And you come clear over here until you're on 16 inches away. So that's that mark right there. Now the last butt line that we did was also 16 inches right there well here the 16 inch butt line was there so we know there's the shear line where the gunnel is it's going to come up to here up to here and then the next one's two inches up now that one is one four one plus or one foot four inches 16 inches and an eighth plus a sixteenth plus designates at a sixteenth. Let's double check that one. That is water line number 10. Water line number 10, station eight, one, four, two. There we are, one, four, two. 
That is water line 12. Is that where we were at? Water line 12, 142. I think we were on 141 plus, which is this one. So we're basically doing two here. So there's that one, and then there's that one. And you just keep plotting them up there. So this one here, at number 16, water line 16, it's 15 and 3 eighths. It's designated as one, three, and three. So it's one foot, three inches, and three eighths. So 15 inches and three eighths. So see, now we're in between that 15 and the 16 from down here. You're just measuring out from that center line. You do that, then the next one plots up here. Now these two, one was a butt line and one was a water line. But then if we pull back here, you can see what the shape of this whole thing looks like. From the profile up there, it's a flat, fairly flat bottom, slight curve until we get over towards the side of the canoe and then it really curves until we get all the way down here to the shear line. Now, of course, you have to plot these on the other half of the paper. And so you can see I've got all my little marks there and you basically just connect the dots until you have the whole pattern that you lay out on your plywood and you cut out. We'll quickly take a look at the last one we did before this, which I kept trying to do again because I kept shifting to the wrong thing. Here is station number nine, and you can see these dots are all connected. And so that's what that's gonna look like. Now this part down here where we just got straight lines coming down, I do them on the six inch mark, that's 12 inches and that's the that's the part that's, you're not building a canoe off of that. That's just the part that connects to the strong back where you set it up so that that's, that mushroom is sticking up in the air. And we'll have 16 of those dudes, the whole length of that strong back so that then we can build our canoe off of these. And you can see we've got multiple molds already made which we looked at those in an earlier video. Anyway, the book Canoe Craft says this is too complicated for their discussion, and as I'm trying to video it and describe it, I see why they didn't try to tell you how to do it in the book. But once you get started on it, as long as you stay in the right column and don't plot the wrong deals, it gets to where it's pretty easy. You look at 1-6, and you know it's 80, 18 inches, you know, stuff like that. All right, good luck. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.